Microsoft Word is a word processing program and basically what that means is that you can write and store your text within the program. To open up the program you can see here I've got my shortcut on my desktop. If I didn't have it there then I'd have to come down here and click on the start button and either type in the name of the program Word 2010 or click on all programs and then scroll to find Microsoft Office the folder, click on it to expand it and there it is. It takes quite a few clicks to get there to open up the program. What I did instead, let me click off in a blank area, is created that shortcut to the Word 2010 program here on my desktop. I could also create it down here on my taskbar and if you're like me and you're about shortcuts as far as opening up your programs then you want to watch my Windows 7 training video on those shortcuts. In any case, to open up the program I'm going to double click on the shortcut and boom, there we go. So anytime you open up the uh, Word 2010 program, this is basically what you're going to be seeing here. And what I want to do is I want to give you a quick overview of what you're looking at by starting in the upper left hand corner and working my way down to the bottom. So in the upper left hand corner you have the blue W. The color blue and the W is an indicator that you're in the W for Word, the Word program. And then over to the right of that you have what's known as the Quick Access Toolbar. They call it that because you can quickly access the tools or commands on that bar in a single click. You can see that when I hover over one of the commands it pops up and it says this is the save command. Then when I click on it, it'll save my document. Then over to the right, it's the title bar and it's got the title of the document. It's kind of a generic title, so anytime you open it up it'll be either document 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It doesn't matter because you can rename that when you save your document. And you can rename it like my spiffy document, my business document, whatever you want to name it as. And then over to the right of that, it has the name of the program that you're in. So again, you got a few indicators of the program that you're in by looking at the title bar, looking at the color here, blue for Word, or the W there for Word. Over to the far right, you have the three buttons, minimize, the restore down, and the close. Those are operating system features, so if you want to learn more about those, then you want to watch my Windows 7 training videos. I mean, basically, close out of the uh, program, just click on the X. And then down below that, they have what's known as the ribbon. And on the ribbon, you have a bunch of tabs. And these tabs, when you click on it, updates the ribbon down below and displays a new set of commands. Let me go back to the Home tab. And this was first introduced into Microsoft, well, Microsoft Word here back in 2007. And if you haven't worked in Microsoft Word 2007, this is new to you, you realize that Microsoft got rid of the menus and the toolbars in favor of this ribbon. Why did they do that? Well, the menus and the toolbars were hidden. They had a lot of toolbars that weren't displayed. In fact, if they displayed all the toolbars, they'd have to stack it down below to, I don't know, halfway down your screen, which wouldn't leave you a lot of room to write in your document. So what they did is they just went ahead and they had these tabs. When you click on it, again, opens up a, a list of commands here for inserting things when it comes to the layout of your page, references, mailings. In any case, back on the Home tab, you have these commands that are sectioned off into what are called groups. And you can see that you've got a line here that sections off this group right here known as the font group. So the commands in there all pertains to your font. So if you want to go ahead and make your font bold, then click on the B for bold. If you want to italicize it, there's the I or underline it and so on. Now within each group, you may have what's called the expandable dialog box button. It's that little arrow. In other words, Microsoft couldn't fit all the commands into that group. So what it did is it created that little arrow that you can click on it to expand the group into another window. And it displays a lot of the same commands that you see here, the most commonly used commands. But also in addition to that, some of the less commonly used commands like effects. So I've got the preview window down here. And if I want to see what it looks like, if I want to go ahead and make the text all in uppercase, all caps, check it. You can see in the preview window it's all uppercase. Okay. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that click cancel. So that's going to be available in quite a few groups, not all of them. Like you can see over here in the editing group, it doesn't have that expandable dialog box button. So what you see here is what you get. Now in addition to all the tabs you have here, when you click on one and go to the other, it updates the list of commands there or the ribbon of commands. Except when you come over here and you click on the file tab. In Office 2007 they had the office circle or the icon. It looks like the start button, that icon there, that when you click on it, it opened up a menu. The file tab doesn't open up a menu, it actually takes you behind the scenes, it's known as the backstage. When I click on it, I can't see my document anymore, I'm behind the scenes. Because in the backstage view, as this view is known as, you can go ahead and customize your document. You and come down here to options, and then you have other options here, you can go ahead and save and send this to somebody else, print it, create a new document, get some information about your document, open close it, save it as a different file. In any case, things that aren't directly working with text on your document is behind the scenes or backstage here. To get back to the front stage, 
as it were, either come up here and click on the File tab, or, and you'll notice when I click on the File tab, it takes me to the same tab that I last left, like the page layout. So if I go to the Home tab and click File, and click File again, it takes me to the Home tab, where I last left it. Or if I click on the File tab, you can come up here and go to the Page Layout directly. You don't have to click on the File tab again. I mean, whatever works for you. Let me go back to the Home tab. Then below our ribbon here, we have the uh, ruler. You may not see the horizontal or vertical rulers. If you don't see it, then come over here to the far right, and it's a little button that says View Ruler. Click on it to hide it. Click on it to display the ruler. And then down below, you have a blank document here. So you can just go ahead and start typing in your text. And then down below, you have what's known as the status bar. It reveals the stats of your page, like how many words you have in your document, what page you're on, page one of one. You can go ahead and right click anywhere on the status bar if you want to change that, like you don't want to see page numbers. Uncheck that and the page numbers disappear. Let me go ahead and check that again because I would like to see what page I'm on. You know, if I'm on page two of five, if there's a total of five pages within the document, I want to know what page I'm on. In any case, let me click off in a blank area. And then over to the far right of the status bar, you have your different views that we'll cover in a later training video. And then you have your zoom effect, where you can click and drag to zoom in to see the text closer, make it larger, or click and drag this to zoom out. And then don't forget, of course, your scroll bar here over to the far right. You can click and drag that to scroll down to the bottom of the page, or click and drag that to scroll up, or you can use the up and down arrows. That works as well. Now before I go ahead and close out, there's one more thing I want to go over. Now we talked about the ribbon here in the different tabs, right? There may be times where there may be more tabs here. And those times will come while working with, uh, for example, maybe like objects. So when I click on the Insert tab, and let's say I want to insert a shape, click on the shapes, and let's do, let's do a line. I click on the arrow, you see the black cross. When I click and drag a line, notice what happens up here on the ribbon. When you go ahead and you're working with different objects, pictures, and things, and we'll cover this in later training videos, you may find yourself with additional tabs. In other words, they have special features that aren't found on these other tabs. They may be found on some of the tabs, but it condenses them all onto this uh, tab here. Makes it easy for you to go ahead and work, in this case, what I've drawn here, without having to bounce through these other tabs to maybe change the color of the line or to do shape effects or shape outline colors and other features that we'll talk about. So to get rid of the tab, I can either click on another tab, and it doesn't get rid of it because it's still there because I have it selected, but if I click off of it, then it disappears. It only comes back when I select that uh, object. Now that I have it selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit the delete key on the keyboard and get rid of it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.